Hi everyone, it's Jean from the Inky Owl Studio. So happy you could stop by today. I have a tutorial today and it's going to be on the uh, folio, file folder folios that I have been making for the past couple of months. Um, and I asked for permission to use this design because the design was originally uh, created by Andrea at Artie Nays. So she said, I can go ahead and do a tutorial. I am going to do it a little differently than what she, how she's done it. She's incorporated a lot of her mixed media expertise into um, her video. And mine's going to be really basic. Just kind of give you the, the bones of how to structure your file folder. And I will put some decoration into it, but I will do it off camera. So let's get started. You're going to need two file folders. You're going to need one complete file folder. And I like to use the middle tab, but you can use the other ones. You can experiment with it. Um, I just find the middle tab easier to work with. I use heavy duty file folders. Uh, I think it's important if you want your product to last for a while to use the heavy duty. And the second file folder, you're really going to take pieces from it. So if you don't want to use two file folders, so if you're not going to make a second folio to use up the other uh, file folder, you can always use um, a heavyweight cardstock, um, preferably like 110 pounds, but you know, the 65, this is 65 and it is a little um, more flimsy, but it can, it can be used. Um, so that's what you'll need there. You'll need a good glue. Um, I use glitter glue, glitter art, art glitter glue, and Fabri Tac. And these are kind of my two basic go to glues. Um, you can, I think Eileen's Tacky Quick Dry works really well as well. I would not recommend a glue stick. I, I think you need something a little bit more heavy duty than a glue stick. You will need uh, also a few pieces of a reinforcement to go into the folds because you want the folds to last a while. So I'm using Tyvek from a used uh, envelope. You can use masking tape as well. I would, uh, I think getting the wide masking tape probably would work best for you, but you can use that. Um, you could even use a wide washi tape if you glued it in. You would have to make sure it was glued in well. So those are um, a few things that you can use for the reinforcement of the folds inside of it. And you'll need to put an extra layer in the spine. Um, you can use a piece of cereal box. You know, it's, it's a pretty good, like, cardstock type of thing. Um, if you've got 110 paperweight cardstock, you can use a strip of that. You could even use a strip off of your file folder, the, the one that you're going to cut up. You can also put in secondary strip with that as well. So you'll need um, something like that to reinforce that spine area where you're going to be putting your brad. So you, you will need uh, eyelets, excuse me, you'll need two eyelets and you'll need a way to set the eyelets. So I have a crop of dial and um, that's how I'm going to be setting them. Uh, so two eyelets and I don't have the eyelets right in front of me but the, you will need um, two of those. You'll be needing some brads, some small brads, and um, let's see, and then you'll need some elastic. Now your elastic can be, um, it can be anywhere from 1.2 to 2 millimeters. Uh, I like the 1.2, it's my favorite to use. You could use one, you could use one. Um, one millimeter, but I sort of like the range of 1.2 to two millimeters. And of course, you know, your scissors and a bone folder. And you'll need your decorative paper, whatever you're going to be using. I'm going to be using the Nature's Remedy from uh, Tracy Fox and Artie Mays. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I just got it. And of course, it's been out for a while and I've been seeing it all over. And 
I am so happy I finally purchased it because it's got a lot of good um, digis that you can use in other projects as well. And you'll need a distress ink and your um, distress sponge. So I think that that is the list. Um, yeah, pretty sure that that's the list for you. Now let's get started with the construction of it. Now file folders, you know, depending on your company that you get them from, sometimes have this little, little lip here. And I, I really don't like it. I like a nice rounded shape. So I definitely cut those off, you know, at the very beginning. It just, uh, I think it's, I like it better without them, but you know, don't have to. It doesn't really affect your size that much. So I just take a little sliver off of each side. So it has a more rounded look to it. Oh, yes, and you're going to need a scoreboard. Sorry about that. Um, I have this large scoreboard here, which I love, and it works for lots of projects. But you may not have a scoreboard. So you can use a stylus and a ruler. A stylus like this it has a little tip on it and uh, a nice ruler um, that you can hold without it sliding too much. And you can go ahead and, you know, just use that to make your various score lines. Now you can also fold by hand. Um, I think the scoring gives you a sharper, crisper edge, but you can fold it as well um, and use your uh, burnishing tool to make sure that it's well folded. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna have your tab to the right you're going to lay it down inside and the first score line is at three and seven eighths so that is actually i think i'm going to be using this here three and seven eighths is the first score line and sometimes something thick like this take a couple of passes the next one uh, is naturally already scored there. So if you can see it's already got a score line, it'll be the very first one. And I like to go, you know, over it just once. And then you have two ways of doing this one here. So when you fold it over, you want to make sure that this edge of this tab does not interfere with the fold line in the spine because this area is going to be the spine. So you want to allow, a, you know, like a fourth of an inch from there. And most of the time, at least what I have found with the file folders I use, and I got mine from uh, Office Depot, and uh, most of the time you can do it at four and seven eighths. All right, and then do it also at five because this side does get a little chunky and that little tiny mini mini spine kind of like gives you a little bit more room to put stuff in it. Now that you've done that, we're going to burnish those fold lines like so. We have all the fold lines done in and as you can see this is this area is going to be the spine. This is going to fold over and this is going to fold over and you're going to have your pockets here and some pockets here and over there. Now we're now we're going to do the bottom half of it. Well not half but the bottom we're going to fold up to make more pockets and to make this uh, a TN size. So what you'll need to do is measure 
from the top and then we're going to call this the top and I have my tab right there I'm going to put it there I'm going to measure eight and a quarter and that's that's going to be the height of my journal and we're going to put a score line down at this eighth and a quarter quarter and so now flip it over come down and meet that score line all righty so now we have a few places that we're going to put pockets here at the bottom now there are going to be sections that we are not going to need and I am going to put an X on the section to cut out and it is the two outsides and it's also just this little area here in the spine now as you experiment with this folder you may want to keep them you may want to do something with them you know um, it's up to you um, but for right now or I'm going to have you cut them off and when I cut them out I am going to cut towards uh, on the side of the seam or the score line I'm going to cut into the tab I'm keeping so this is the tab I'm keeping and I'm going to cut just along there all right, and so this is the one we are not keeping because it has an X in it. So again, I'll just cut along the score line there. Cut along the score line here. And cut off this little spine area. Like so. Yeah. Now I would keep these because uh, we're going to use, we can use these um, and you can also use them for other projects as well. <clears throat> now here is the inside of our folder. This one needs to be cut in half and so I allow uh, I cut I cut down to where there's about maybe an inch and three-fourths left over here this one here um, I like to put a tab on it now you can put a tab on it to two different ways you can uh, use the um, punch board to make a tab um, the punch board to make a tab and uh, essentially what you do is you make a punch like this and then you cut off that part and so you can and then you can round the corners so you can make a um, a tab that way you can also just take another tab from you know your other file and file folder and then um, you know let's say that now if you put a tab in like this you could make it this wide but you could also come across here and just make it this wide okay and you can just trace around here and then you can cut this out and then round the corner so you would have a tab here or you do not have to put any tabs in <laughs> so it is up to you how you would like to do that so I have cut out the little tab here for this first pocket uh, this little flap I have angled off the sides because uh, I like the look of it but you can leave it straight um, I just I like that look a little bit so I angled them off now I do um, want to also point out that both of these flaps when they come up you need to be careful that they do not go past the fold the score line because then it will impede the, the fold 
So you got to make sure that they do not pass that score, that crease line. So you may have to do additional cutting. You can do it with, you know, drawing a line with a pencil and cutting it with scissors. Or you can also use, not everyone has this, but you can use uh, a ruler, you know, with a craft knife. And just make your little cuts, you know, that way. The same with over here, you can make uh, cuts with a craft knife and a uh, ruler. But you can also draw a line with a pencil and then cut it with scissors. But you just want to make sure, and usually this does take additional cutting because it is kind of hard sometimes to judge when you first cut it out how narrow it needs to be. So I wanted to bring out those two little factors to you. Also, this little nub out here, I don't particularly like this nub. So I come in and, you know, we'll just slice him off here with a craft knife and uh, get rid of him don't really care for it so there we go now we have our folder and then just you know want to make sure that it folds up easy and nice you're going to have a little bit of uh, extension here on this side now this is a uh, this is something else you can do but it's not absolutely necessary this is where that second folder then is going to come in handy and that is I'm going to cut off the tab that's on that folder and we're going to glue it onto this section here for an extra little file folder tab you don't have to do this uh, for sure but i think this is what i'm going to do uh, let me get my cutter here and take off that little section that i don't like that little lip over there all right, and you'll want to cut a piece. Hmm. You want to have enough to glue onto the folder, you know, to make it kind of stable. So about, you know, three quarter of an inch down, approximately. You know, with a strip like this, and then I'm going to trim it off just as a hair more. I didn't quite get enough off of there. Then what we're going to do is, so here's your, here's your uh, tab here on the right that gets folded in and this gets folded down. So we're going to glue it right along here. You can position it wherever you would like. Now you don't have to worry about this part showing because we are going to um, put design paper over it. So, you know, you don't have to worry about that. You can position it up here if you prefer. You know, you can position it anywhere you would like. And so we'll just uh, glue it on here. Okay, you don't want to go, I want to be careful not to go into the tab area. And you can just put this on here and there. Okay. there we go so now you have a little file folder tab here you can make your tab too and just like the way we said you can trace another one and cut it out uh, as well so now you have a tab there all right moving right along we are now going to reinforce the folds in here so we have three folds that need to be reinforced and uh, I'm using the tie back and um, using a large piece for here in the middle and these two pieces over here now like I say you can use your masking tape you can use a wide washi tape make sure you glue it down so I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, once you have your um, reinforcement glued in, and I'm using Fabri-Tac uh, for this, this gluing because uh, I think it holds really well. And I would like I like to go back over it and re-burnish um, the 
folds a little bit because you know we kind of bulked it up with the reinforcement and this sort of helps to get it um, folding nicely again. I just go over it like that. And there we go. So that's all folding nice and well. Now we need to reinforce the spine and this is where you're going to get your little strip of either uh, like 110 pound weight uh, cardstock, you know, real heavy cardstock, or you can take a piece of the file folder or you can take a piece of a cereal box and cut a strip out. And we just, because this is going to be holding your eyelets, we want to just make sure there's a nice, good base for the eyelet. This is just, let me measure. Uh, this is this is like five-eighths of an inch wide, but uh, it may vary with your folder, actually, how wide that these um, come out. So, But you want to make sure that it sits inside so that you can easily easily fold this in without it hindering it so you don't want it to go over the hinge part you want to make sure it sits neatly inside so we will just um, glue that in quickly and get that done yeah cutting these little strips is a little bit of a challenge I see that my strip is a little bit more narrow on the end there um, but it should still be fine. And just stick it down in there. Okay. Now this is going to get covered with decorative paper, so the uh, the color of this strip is really doesn't matter. And we test everything. Yay, looks good. Now this is all white, especially if you're using Tyvek. And um, what will show will be the creases in between. Your decorative paper will come up just, you know, just before the crease. And what, that's what's going to really show. So I take my Distress Ink and I'm using for my papers, I'm using the tea dye color. And if you don't have Distress Ink, you know, any kind of a brown uh, inking will do. I just... I just put new ink in my pad and I'm just a little hesitant as to how dark it's going to come out. Okay, good. You know, once you ink up the creases, then you're going to want to go around and if you want the ink, if you want the distressed look, which is totally up to you, you may not want the distressed look, but you're going to go around the folder and you're going to just distress the edges and you're going to do that all the way around, all the way around the outsides of these, and do them on the folds, do them on the folds out here. So I am going to do that off camera because that's really boring, but this is the time now to do that inking if that's the kind of look you like. Once you finish all your inking all around, we're going to be making a second layer pocket um, to go behind this guy here. and what you're going to need is you're going to need a piece that's just like a half inch wider than this pocket approximately and uh you know it doesn't have to come all the way at the bottom you can you can go up probably like um halfway up would be would be about right up the pocket and then you can eye the rest of it up it just it kind of depends on how tall you want your pocket to be so for mine I am going to make it um, you know about this much taller that's probably a good two inches taller than uh, what my tab is there but you know you can make it as short or as tall as you'd like and I'll just cut this off really fast. And so once you've done that, so then again, we can look at it and say it's about half inch wider. And, you know, 
almost two inches taller. That's what mine's going to be. And then what we're going to need to do is make a mark as to where, okay, we'll put it in here straight, how we like it. We're just going to put a mark, like right here, you know, with a pen or stylus, however you'd like to do it. Um, make a mark there, and then I'm going to score that particular um, place where I've just made the mark. And, you know, scoring is just makes it the job easier, but you can definitely fold it instead. And what we're trying to do is make a second pocket that has a little bit more room to slide something in so it's not so tight that you can only get like one tag in. You might be able to get a couple in there. If you just put a little bit of a sort of a pocket form there. And um, then you can decide, you know, if you want to make a tab there, you might want to make a tab on the opposite side. So you can, uh, you know, lay down a pattern. Here's a piece of a tab here. And you can cut out your tab there. And you have um, two tabs down there that you would like. So I'm going to stop here. I think that we have done quite a bit for the first day. And when we come back, then we're going to talk about putting um, more flaps and folds on it with, with envelopes. So you'll need two um, envelopes, business size envelopes. You can use new envelopes if you'd like. I usually use recycled ones. And you can tea stain them or you don't have to. Um, however you want to do that, but you'll need two business size envelopes to finish out uh, the flaps that we're going to be doing. So thanks so much for viewing. I hope this was clear and helpful. And if you have any questions, you can put them down in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, if you see this video like weeks after I've made the video, um, I'll try to always check back. It may not be easy for me to do so, but you can go to my about page and there is a um, company email at inkyowlstudio at gmail.com that you can also ask me a question. So thanks a lot for viewing and we will talk to you later. Bye.